Hello, YouTube. Patrick here with Homebred Aquatics. So today we're going to be going over the top five things to breed for profit. However, one of them may not be something you necessarily breed. So, throughout this list, I'm going to go over the reasons why you might want to breed these. Their difficulty, their ease, um, and what makes them profitable. Now, I want to caveat to say that this list may not follow suit for everyone. However, the best way to know what to breed is to go to your local fish store. Go there and ask them what you want them to, or what they want you to breed. If they're looking for something, it might mean it's really difficult to get in a lot. Or it might mean they just sell out of it all the time that they need more. And this is something I've done over and over and over again. And it's proven success to the point that I can't keep up with what they want. I still do provide as much as I can, but I just can't keep up, which is a good problem to have. If you can't keep up with what they want, then if you can double up the production or whenever you have it, they're gonna take it, which is awesome. You never want things just to sit around. You wanna be able to turn them over. So, without further ado, I do want to go into our number five. So our number five is going to be angelfish. Now, angelfish are great things to breed. One, they're pretty easy to breed overall. Um, right from their young, they pair off really early. Sometimes you can find them in the fish stores that have already paired off, already laying eggs. Or you can just get a group of them and wait for them to pair off. It's not going to take a long time and then go from there. Once they lay their eggs, the eggs are relatively easy to hatch, and their fry are really easy to raise with baby brine trim or crushed up flakes right from hatch. And then not only that, their fry raise up extremely quickly. So within a couple, a few months, they're ready to sell on. Now I want to caveat one thing here, because I don't necessarily think that any angelfish will do. I like to go for a little bit more of a premium angelfish. And I kind of caveat back to what I said in the beginning. I asked the local fish store, hey, what angelfish do you want me to breed? And in the beginning, it was black marbles or black bales. They said, hey, we just can't get enough. We really need some. And if you breed them, we'll buy. And I'm like, awesome. So I had started there. So to this day, I still do black marbles, blacks, high-end kois, blue marbles, and I could do plenty, plenty more, and I'm sure they sell. All right, so number four, bristlenose plecos. I specifically caveat the bristlenose plecos because of their ease to breed. Once they reach maturity, they, one, they're easy to sex, and two, they pair off and they do their own thing and it's almost completely hands-free. The lady goes in the cave, lays her eggs, the male fertilizes them, and he practically raises the fry up. He'll hatch them out, they'll stay in the cave for a little while, and for me, it's as easy as plugging the cave out and dumping it in my grow up. For people with larger tanks, just let the babies be free and feed a little bit heavier than normal. The fry are extremely easy to raise. It takes a little bit longer than angelfish, but I rarely lose any fry in the process. And depending on the strand, they can bring in a decent amount of money per bristlenose. And anything from my long thin super reds, which yield quite the price, to just standard chocolates, which a store just can't get enough of them. They also sell them for relatively. I've never gone wrong by breeding these guys. And 99% of the time when I bring a bunch of them to a store, they are more than willing to take them. So that's why they're my number. Alright, so number three on the list. Fancy pure line guns. Now I caveat to pure line a lot. And what I mean by that is it's a pure strand of that gut. Whether that be 
Moscow or purple or red lace or whatever it may be, but pure line guppies because we want the fry to end up just like the hair. It's just as beautiful as you remember. So make sure they're separated. And why guppies? Well, they're libraries. They produce their own fry like a drop of the dime. Every 30 days, you're going to get a new set of fry. Brush up some flakes, add them to the tank. You want them to grow a little bit faster, do baby brine. But they just boom every single month. And stores eat them up. They can't sell enough of them. And being that the quality coming out of Thailand and overseas isn't very good, the stress of shipment, getting goat guppies from your local breeder is a win-win for a lot of these stores. They lose a lot less, they're prettier, they're much healthier overall. It's great for them and honestly great for us. So I think number three for guppies is just, you can't go wrong, honestly. Anybody can start with it. I just highly recommend you get a pure line strand. All right, number two on the list. Plants. All right, all right. I know they're not a fish you breed, but I don't see this on people's lists a lot. And I think you have to put plants on your list. They can go in any tank. They grow like wildfire. They provide coverage for your fish. I mean, even if you're just doing guppies and throw java moss or guppy grass in a tank and just let it grow, you have to clip it back at least monthly and then that's more money right there. Now plants don't fetch a higher price tag, but they don't necessarily just die either. And they are continuously honest influx of profit. I have several plant tanks here and several of them are around with CO2, so I can just grow those plants as fast as I can. And I tell you what, uh, in private sales, a huge portion of them for me are plants. And to, uh, I just have a deal with the local fish store and I sell all my plants to them. You can't go wrong with plants, whether or not it's super easy plants or high, high end plants. But just like the fish, ask that question. What plants do you want me to grow? Because some stores might not be equipped for CO2 plants, but they want the really easy things to grow like water sprite, wisteria, java moss, things like that, that sometimes they just can't get enough of, or it's just way more convenient to get from you. So yeah, grow plants, grow them in every tank you can. Make it a part of your top five. All right, all right, number one on the list. My pride and joy, Neo Caridinia shrimp. Neo's palm cherry shrimp, whatever phrase you want to use for but neo Now, why are they my number one? One, because I barely have to feed them. You can grow algae walls and little tang gallon tanks, um, just like I do. And these guys just explode in population. I might feed them twice every week. And I yield hundreds and hundreds. The more I start with, the more I have. My thing here is, just make sure you separate your colors. If you're gonna do them, do them color specific if you're breeding for profit. Blues in one tank, red in the other, yellow in the other, because we don't want them to mix up. You might get some that come out red, you might get some that come out blue, but sometimes they're just gonna come out brown. Now they're not a waste of shrimp, I call those my coal shrimp and I sell them for significantly less. But this is another thing that stores can't get enough of. People come in and they buy six, eight, ten of them at one time. And stores need someone that has an influx that can bring in 50 a week or 50 a month or even more at times. And these guys aren't necessarily cheap either. You can produce so many so easy for such little cash and little time that it is remarkable the amount of money you can on these guys. They are great and they're cute. I just love them. But yeah, they have to be my number one. Great for planted things, great for profit, 
be great if you just don't have a lot of time. All right, guys, so if you stuck around with me till now, I really, really appreciate it. If you go down below and you hit that like button, hit comment, ask me questions, blow me up. I love to answer these questions. And I plan on going a little bit more further into depth about each one of these and what makes them so profitable. And maybe I can share a few hints, tips, secrets, and what they actually meant me sometimes. All right, guys, I really appreciate it, and thanks for staying with me.